how is academic writing different than popular writing or creative writing? Trust me, in this section, what I'm going to talk about, most of that can be attributed about science. Most of that, much of which can be also true for science in general. First thing, you, you write your Facebook posts, you write your stories, and the amount of training you need for that, the amount of training maybe you need for writing a novel, mostly it has to be inside you. But for academic writing, it should be taught. Somebody should teach you that. Or you have to learn it by yourself through extensive uh, learning phase. Unfortunately, we are not taught how to write academic writing. I'm sure people who are in undergrad, people who are in their HSC, nobody really taught you how exactly to write your homework assignments, how to write your term papers. I'll talk more about it in, in a later section, why we are so bad at it. Once learned, academic writing is actually easier than creative writing, primarily because there is a formula. If you learn that formula, then, then you are good. Academic writing, it emphasizes, it focuses a lot on avoiding double meaning. That's what we do in academic writing. We share our findings, whatever we do. Maybe we did some research. We try to share that information, share our findings with the world. We try to do that in a way so that it cannot be misinterpreted, which is very, very important. Academic writing is based on solid argument. It's not a reflection of your opinion. Your opinion does not matter. You have to be very cool in your logic. In academic writing, the less the number of assumptions, the better. So see how I told you that most of which is also true for science? Science tries to deal with less number of assumptions. Also, in academic writing, it needs to be correct rather than pretty. You have to draw a lot of pictures for your academic writing as well, right? For your homework assignments or maybe for your research findings. I had a professor in my undergrad in environmental science, Dr. Mahfuzur Rahman, and uh, I was in his class, meteorology, which is the study of weather. In that meteorology class, there was a question about orographic lifting. It basically means when the air from the ocean, moist air, goes through the mountain and it encounters a mountain, it basically rains on that same side. And in the other side, there is no rain, no rain at all. If you all know the Himalayan mountain range, on the other side, on the north side of the Himalayan mountain range, it's, it's completely des desert. It's called the Gobi Desert. And the reason is exactly that, because the cloud cannot pass the mountain. So in that course, what I did is uh, I drew a beautiful picture, but some of my rain was going on the other side. And Dr. Mahfuz Rahman told me that uh, your picture is very pretty, but that's not the job of a scientist. The job of a scientist or a researcher is to show the accurate picture, not the prettier ones. So it has to be correct, your academic writing. In academic writing or in science, who you are does not matter. If you are a prominent scientist or if you are very famous, your opinion means nothing until it's true. So the playing field is somewhat level. What I mean by that is any junior scientist, any junior researcher, can rip apart a bad argument from the most senior scientist. So if you're in physics and if you find something wrong with Albert Einstein's theory, go ahead and publish it and everyone will celebrate you for that. So there was a study and it was in the George Mason University where the professors were asked, what do you think the standards of academic writings are? and they came up with three standards. Number one, 
clear evidence in writing that the writer or writers have been persistent, open-minded, and disciplined in their study. Number two, the dominance of reason over emotions or sensual perception. That means whatever your sense is telling you, um, that could be wrong. You have to understand that. And number three, in academic writing, you have to consider that your reader is cool, rational, the reader is reading for information and intending to formulate a reasoned response. So you have to assume that your reader is intelligent, your reader is looking for information, and that reader is going to use that information to formulate a response or maybe formulate their opinion. So you have to give as much logical information as you can. So it's so important, then why are we bad at it? The reason is we are not taught academic writing institutionally. I talked about that before. Let me say just a few more things why that is. Why are we not taught academic writing institutionally? It's because it requires a personal touch. There is a lot of editing and revision to be made by someone else who will read it and give you those comments and then you will improve in hsc or in plus 9 10 we had 80 students sometimes 200 students the professor just do not get enough time to tell you how you can improve it that's why we are bad at it I told you about master's and PhD projects and the other thesis based projects. There is always a supervisor who is supposed to guide you. And that is probably the first time you are given an idea how to write an academic writing. But before that, all those homeworks, all those assignments, maybe other project papers, we basically wing it. We try to do our best. Professors complain, they take a sigh, like, Whew, all students are bad at writing. That's what they say. But they don't really have time to give you feedback, to effectively show you how you can improve. Uh, I think it's mainly when you come for PhD, then you get the attention that you truly need, the attention that your writing skill needs. Don't worry if you are bad at writing. We all are. You will improve with, with perseverance, with persistence.